I'm with Sandrine Hilal from Psychology Al Yom. Now, Sandrine, there's a war in Gaza at the moment. How is the war affecting the people in Gaza and the people in Bethlehem? Hello. Thank you for asking me to share this with you. I really appreciate it. The war in Gaza brings so much hard feelings, loneliness, anger, and fear. In Gaza, they don't know anything about future. They lost their houses, beloved people. There are so many sad pictures that really our minds can't understand it and also our hearts can't handle it. For the West Bank, they are so sad, anger, fear also. For what they saw, disappointed and feared to have the same in the future. So the picture they saw it, they afraid to see this like it brings it here in Bethlehem too. So they're scared that something could happen here in Bethlehem? This is our fears. Mm. Now, when people are watching the news and seeing body bags and people trapped, does that affect the people psychologically and how does it affect them? It's so hard for anyone to see bodies, bags and people on the streets are dead. It's very hard to handle it or to, to understand what's happening it, outside the humanity. Anyone can see it, uh, see it. He will be sad loneliness, fear or anger, especially when they saw children or women or elders. So it will be so hard in their psychology mm. because they will be disappointed, feeling fear, feeling sad. In Gaza, they know now they are like disappointed. There is no food, uh, no water, no basic things in Gaza. So it's uh, very, really very, very hard to handle it. Should we be keeping these images of children and dead bodies things away from children when they're watching the news? If we can, if they under the age of uh, two years, we prefer that. But sometimes when they go to the school and they have uh, their phones, they maybe hear the other children, they maybe saw this uh, in the phones, maybe they saw something, political things in the streets. If they ask... We must speak with our children about that, but we must speak about that in the way they understand, mm. how they understand, and we must just answering their questions without details, because maybe they don't ask about something, and we, when we give them these details, we can bring for them the fear. Mm. So we just answering their questions and we don't need to, to lift the, just answer the question and lift back. We need to give them the source of uh, humanity, the source of uh, safety and how to feel that they are safe. Mm -hmm. This is very important thing to deal with our children, not just answering and let them feel fear. We must as um, as families, as mothers, as fathers, as parents, to give them the space of safety. I imagine it's very difficult because you can keep your children away from images in your home, but when they're going to school and everyone's talking, some are in the news and some are not and seeing these, it's very difficult to keep the children away from all of this conflict, isn't it? Yes, it's very hard because it's reality. We are, <laughs> we are in, like facing these problems. Sometimes uh, we as parents are feeling not good so the children can see our face, can see our expressing feelings, our, uh, our daily um, fear. So they, uh, they can understand from what we speak to at home. So I think that we need to, um, to speak with the children to can help them. But first, we must help ourselves. What should we be looking for in our children if they're suffering from psychological problems from the things that they've been watching? I saw many problems with the children. Like when they fear, they return back in the years. Like they, they can't sleep well, they maybe can't eat well, maybe they have a violence maybe they are shouting in many ways that we can or many pictures we saw that it's uh, it told us this is a problem here from what they saw mm. sometimes maybe if they drawing something we can understand their feelings so many problems we see like in the schools maybe they will become to not uh, focus not concentrate maybe hyper maybe uh, lots of things we can see that the picture is different now you do psychology here in bethlehem have you been doing special courses on dealing with the war 
we did by videos and by some um, group meetings with the people, how to express their feeling and how to deal that hard times we face. So we did that. And we did some programs, some activities about how to let our feelings get it out, to express about our anger, to express about our loneliness, to express about sadness, and how much humanity we need. We need to, to live a normal life as anybody in the world. So we did many group meetings to, to let the people can handle this and uh, like to deal right with this, to not be disappointed, to not be alone. We need each other in that time to encourage others, to encourage ourselves too, as we are all psychological people or um, mm -hmm. as a psychologist or as a people, we are a human facing the same problems here. Sometimes we feel that we can't do anything to let the people feel safe, but we have some tools. We learn it in our uh, a psychology or mental health uh, uh, universities that can uh, help us. There's been many wars in Gaza. Is this the worst situation psychologically that you've seen? Yes, in Gaza, yes. This is the worst war I have seen because it destroyed the basic things. Mm. People in Gaza now, their big dream is how to sleep. Their big dream is how to have something to eat or for their children. Their biggest dream to find a body after the, the one who's killed to get it in a humanity way. So when they say that the people killed without a body, they feel that it's very hard. Their biggest dream when they are died, someone found their body. So it's very hard. Have you been able to do Zoom meetings for psychology with the people of Gaza? It's hard to do Zoom meeting because there is no electricity. The people are uh, disappointed. The people are uh, not ready to, to listen now as they faced very hard problems. It's not problems. It's like more than I can imagine. So we can't do these Zoom meetings now because they need now to let them know that we are with them, pray for them, understand their feeling. We need to do something to let them eat and sleep. And after the war, we can do many things psychologically they need because their basic need now is safe and food and to sleep and not to see dead pictures. Mm. How are people feeling at the moment? Is anger a big problem? And will this be a big problem when the war is over? Anger and fear. Anger because it, it's very hard to understand why children, women and uh, innocent people were dead in a very hard way. The people fear, feeling fear to, uh, to lose their beloved ones, to lose their, uh, their homes. Fear because now we are coming on winter and no, nothing, nothing to let them feel safe or they need to be in heat place. Now it's winter, they are in tents. Many thousands of people are in tents and it's raining, windy. It's hard time, no food, no heaters, no water. All the people in the street, many people did. So they are not healthy, they are in tents. Does the church know how to respond properly to this? You want to be salt and light, but at the same time, you're hurt and angry as well? The church must do something in these times because now the church and the psychologist like one circle. Why I say that? Because we are believing that Jesus can do anything. We are believing that Jesus, when we ask him, he will stop all these things. So our prayers are so much appreciated for God. When we seek God, when we seek Jesus, oh Jesus, come and do something, please. He's listening to us. And he saw and appreciated our hearts. That And Jesus loves all the people. He wants all the people to have the salvation. So this is Jesus' heart. And he feels sad now about all this picture or this darkness picture, let me say. So this is really the church now what she must do to lead the people to pray more, to seek Jesus more. And also if the churches can can help for the people in Gaza in their food, in their water, to, to help the people how to eat, how to, to let them have the basic things, also they can do that. You're a psychologist, but this is personal for you as well because you have family in Gaza. How do you deal with the worry and the concern that you have for your family in Gaza? 
Yes, it's so hard because it's uh, like mm, a special uh, relationship. I have like, it's very close to me. They, they are my parents, sisters. So it's not easy for me as a human. I'm a psychologist, but I am a human. Mm. So I felt worry. I felt fear. I felt that my family are not safe. So what I did, I tried to use all the things I learned with me first. And I tried to pray more because this time we need to use things not to, to, to be disappointed because it's, uh, it's not easy. I really say it's not easy as they are my family and I'm a human. But I focus that we must not stop. We must continue because this is life and we will face many, many hard times in our lives. But when we trust the Lord and we will trust uh, that we have something to, to help our society, it will uh, make us feeling a little better. I don't say that we are left as normal people now, but we are feeling better than we have nothing. So we have our Lord and we have our tools to use with uh, with us first. Then we can use these tools with others. Mm. How is your family? Where are they? My parents uh, are in Gaza, in the same Gaza, in, in the north, which is a very hard time for them. My parents are elder. So my dad is 75 mm. years old. So they need uh, much care than anyone. My sister, she has kids, so it's not easy. They are in Gaza at the north. So what you're teaching, you're actually putting into practice yourself, aren't you? Before I teach, I deal with myself, especially like what I said before for you, that I'm a human being. Then I am trying to deal with myself. Then I can help others with the same tools I used with myself. It must be hard not to worry, though. Sure, I'm a human being. Mm. It's hard to not be worried. Are you seeing great worry and stress here in Bethlehem? Gaza's a long, long way away from here, but are you still seeing the stress and the worry here? There's obviously other problems and concerns financially because of uh, no tourism and lots of people can't work in Israel. Yes, it's so hard. They are fear from what they saw. And like what you said about the economic, they are now facing the same problem. Many people have no work now. We like uh, return back to Corona and more hard Corona now in Bethlehem and or West Bank or uh, Gaza. Mm. Because like basic things are gone. Are you bringing healing to the Holy Land? About your question about the inner healings. Uh, yes, we are looking to bring healings for people. This is our vision, to help people have the inner healing. I believe as psychologists that outside situations affects on the people and people reaction will come from what they received. So we focus about the inner healing and how to deal with our emotions in this hard or difficult time to can live better life. And I believe that they must meet Jesus. Because when they meet Jesus, Jesus will help them and give them many things to understand, like forgiveness. And forgiveness is um, the most important thing that can heal the anger. And other thing, Jesus can give the people the peace that they have not seen it in our society. So when they meet Jesus, they can feel the peace in, inside them. So when they meet Jesus, they can have the trust that they are protected. So Jesus will bring for them the safe that they needed, the safety. So all these emotions that they are really needed now, they can talk it from Jesus. Safety, even loneliness. They are not alone. They, are, they feel that everybody like left them, but really... When they meet Jesus, they can feel and they can understand that they are not lonely. So this is very important to the people to know about Jesus. And this is what we do. And these things, what helps me to handle this or that I feel that Jesus holds me in his word. I trust what he says, that I'm with you. You are never alone. I will protect, I will, uh, I love you and I love uh, your families 
uh, my family are believer in Gaza. They are believing Jesus, and they every time I talk to them, they said we are waiting for Jesus to do a miracle and to stop this war. So they are praying. What I want you to do, please share us and stand with us in prayers too. What is your prayer for Gaza? My prayers uh, for Gaza: safety, mercy, humanity, stop the war, living normal as any life, as any people in the life. Mm. You're doing a great work here with Psychology Alyom. How can people support you? How can they get to know you? Can they send finance to you? Uh, tell us what, uh, how they can get in touch. With you. you can support by prayers. We have email. You can contact me and I will give you the way how to do that. And it's so much appreciated. This is my email, Sandrine, I'm at, at yahoo.com. S-A-N-D-R-E-E-N-M-H at yahoo.com. Okay, Sandrine, thank you very much. Thank you for everybody who can help these people to have the inner healing and to listen and to pray and support. Really appreciate it.